Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we have a little uh, watch which my friend Nick picked up at a uh, car boot sale for five pounds. And uh, this has to be one of the ultimate bargains of um, 2021 last year, because now I'm gonna service it for him. So he can give it to his uh, girlfriend. Um, this one is uh, gold plated. It's a T saw C star automatic, and um, has a very cool two tone dial. It's uh, it's kind of an, an umbrella pattern or an um, X, uh, and uh, yeah, you have the classical uh, strap, which is not too bad on this, but we will uh, replace this later on because uh, brittle straps are. Never really good when you're going to wear a watch. I've already loosened the case back. I uh, glued a nut on there. I've dissolved it and taken it off because I wanted to have a quick inspection when uh, Nick first brought the watch in. You can see it's got 10 micron gold plating. Uh, Tissot case. And we have an ETA movement powering this, this watch. Um, fairly unusual little automatic movement so it uh, definitely needs a service as it's not running we'll start by removing the uh, oscillating weight and it's a bit of rust on the uh, the uh, case clamps here so we'll uh, clean that up later on this is a bit um, it's probably a 70s watch and you have the uh, plastic case ring but luckily it's in good condition these can get brittle so I'm going to be especially careful with that I have actually had one that was completely garbage and I had a friend of mine 3D print a new one, so it's not the end of the world if a plastic case ring is disintegrated completely. That can now be remanufactured with relative ease. These don't have a um, setting screw. You have um, lever which you push in and uh, releases the stem so right now I'm just going to get the right screwdriver for it so it's important you have uh, one that fits the slot push it down and let's try it again push it down and out comes the stem like so Ooh. Look at that. So, I'd say it's pretty crusty, dirty. Well, we'll clean this up and see if we're gonna find a new stem or if this probably be all right if I uh, get the rust off there. Uh, we'll check that for, see how um, sturdy it is. Anyway, let's uh, get the movement out of the case. Yeah, it's nice when they fall out. It's not going to be the case this time. So we gently going to find a place we can pry it out. Oh yeah, there we go. And around. There we go. So yeah, a little bit of um, patina on the dog, but overall this is going to look great. We get it back into the case and it's all cleaned up. Got the original luminous compound on the hands. All the markers are in good condition. I think the dial has survived pretty well for being probably around 50 years old. Should have set these hands to uh, take them off. You just push it in like that and it's in. So I'll take that again later. There we go. And we'll remove the hands. Somebody did comment on me not using the plastic dial protector, but uh, what I do is I keep these uh, nylon 
bits here completely clean and make sure there's no dirt on them and that's pretty much the same as plas uh, pressing on plastic is uh, using this I, um, I haven't had any problems with it so far it hasn't leave left any marks on any dials I've worked on so I'm going to stick for that because that's what works for me and um, if anyone has a problem with it that's fine everyone has their own way of working on watches anyway I'll get the hands into the container and then we'll don't want to lose them. And let's get the uh, case ring off. Well, I'm going to take the hand out again. Um, take the stem, I mean. Have a look. Here we go. Off goes the case ring. I'll clean this up with the, uh, the ultrasonic cleaner together with the rest of the case later on. So here we have the, uh, instead of having a screw holding the doll, doll feet in place, you have this hook and this hook you you uh, move out like so and that is uh, engaging with the dial feet in there press this onto the side of the dial feet and that job does the job quite nicely let's uh, do it on the other side as well there we go dial off and here you can see the dial side I'm quite excited to get this watch um, ticking again because I it's nothing more fun than revive, reviving a proper a proper find like this because it's definitely worth uh, servicing and getting a watch out of it again. And I'm also doing another video with James where we've found a um, very reasonable watch off of uh, eBay, which um, is a Roma, and we're going to do uh, putting that together very soon. And um, yeah, just keep posted and you can see that as well, but that's just a classic example. Uh, that's actually a fully in-house movement case, everything. So it's uh, well worth, here I use the ladies movement holder on this one. That's, uh, that's quite a small movement. Yes, we're, we're, yeah, it's uh, well worth looking for some of the uh, lesser known brands and then you can get yourself some uh, real cool watches without uh, having to bankrupt yourself in the process. sure this is sitting well it's very important you don't press on the balance that's in there correctly but sometimes if you're very unlucky you will uh, if you touch the uh, balance with a movement holder you can break your balance stuff or worse bend or balance wheel so don't do that it's one of those stupid mistakes one can do if you don't focus on what you're doing and while making these videos sometimes it's difficult to focus on several things at the same time anyway i'm going to be fairly quiet now and take the the uh, winding and setting mechanism and date mechanism out of the watch This is the um, date change wheel. The date disc. 
the date to um, change wheel spring. So make sure that it snaps into position, it should. Here's the uh, intermediate date wheel. Here's the intermediate, intermediate um, uh, well, intermediate minute wheel, I believe, hour wheel. And uh, you whoop, have your hour wheel here, intermediate setting wheel. Here's your date quick set. and your setting mechanism. So I just did a mistake and I uh, was a little bit impatient taking the uh, setting or the yoke spring out and it has uh, disappeared. So now I'm going to crawl around on the floor and see if I can find it. But before I do that, I'll take the uh, remaining parts out. Now I'm going to lay down, uh, well, go down on the floor and see if, if I can find the missing spring. So after finding the spring, we are back in action. I'm going to uh, move the lower cap tool as we're already here. Sometimes a job for the microscope, other times not, depending on the size. This one's nice and big and easy to get to. Let's turn the movement around. So these uh, auto winder mechanisms are probably some of my favorite to work on. Two reverser wheels here and the intermittent gear all put in its own unit. Might never have been serviced before. I do find that uh, some watches from this time period, uh, you're more likely to find them in um, say unmolested condition because you've had uh, less generations of people working on them whereas a watch from the 40s or 30s would have another 20 30 years before uh, the quartz movements start to come in here we go here's the auto winding mechanism everything pretty much a perfect uh, miniaturization from the uh, men's version of this movement A proper scale down. Everything here is in very good condition. This pillar isn't bent or worn. I think it's very good. Very nice. Let's get the uh, top capsule out. I might as well take the uh, balance out now as, now as well. 
to minimize any damage to the hair spring by slipping accidents or something like that. Take it like so. Turn off the microscope in the background because we don't need it right now. Ratchet wheel here. Ratchet spring. did do a bit of a mistake now. I should have wound this movement down slowly. Rather, if um, it did have some power reserve, it did get a little shock. Hopefully everything's fine. I'll inspect that later on. Nice, got a low uh, jewel for the barrel. I um, would prefer one on the uh, top bridge here as well, but uh, for this price range of movement, I think that's a nice detail. Might as well open the barrel now. I do that by um, placing it on a hard, surf hard surface and gently pressing down on the sides on the uh, teeth here with my fingers. And that lifts the lid off mm, quite nicely. Here you got the mainspring. We're going to reuse that as it's looking pretty good. Lift it out by hand and I gradually uncoil it. Now I'm lifting the gear train bridge off. There we go, the entire movement stripped down. I'm now just gonna put the uh, balance and balance bridge back in place for the cleaning. As I've uh, said in other videos, this is just a nice way of keeping the uh, coils fairly separated and the balance secure. As you've taken the top jewel and bottom jewel out, it's got lots of um, 
It's got lots of uh, space for the fluid to reach the pivots and clean them as well if there's any dirt there. And uh, I think it's the uh, best way of cleaning your balance wheel. Some people take the balance wheel out of the balance cock and they're allowed to do that. That's um, their choice. But in my book, you only risk damage by doing it. The more you, so it's all about balancing risk of how uh, compared to what you will gain. And the less risk, the better. But um, if you start uh, leaving the barrels closed or the mainsprings in the barrel, I think you're, you're taking it a bit too far because that's parts that really need to be cleaned. But here we're not really, the only thing we risk is a little bit of the underside of the plate here not being cleaned. Um, but that's fairly clean already and there's no, uh, I, I would say this is a good way of doing it. Anyway, let's put all of this in the basket and um, get it in the cleaning machine. Oh yeah, one thing I do want to do is clean this uh, stem up a bit. If it will, we'll try to unscrew it from here. Like so, good. And now I'm going to uh, brush this up. Got, I got this uh, glass fiber brush. Get rid of the surface gunk and surface rust on that. a little bit reduced but i um, confident that will hold so uh, there's not massive amounts of force going through there and we still have uh, most of its structural integrity but at least we got rid of the loose loose crust on the top um, let's do the same for our little case clamps these are a bit more critical that i hold down
that's better. That will do. There's no need to um, get a shiny finish on these. As, um, it's not that kind of watch. Well, I could do, but uh, again, this is all if the client wants me to uh, spend an hour high grade polishing certain parts, um, I'm happy to do it, but you'll also have to pay for my time. And I don't think Nick is uh, willing to do that in this circumstance. Another thing we're going to do is uh, reuse the original crystal and I'll polish that up. There's no uh, crazy, this is a bit of surface scratching, this will come out nicely. And uh, we're going to get a new strap for it. It's, uh, it just has a little bit of pressure. It'll just fall off. That's uh, what I find with old leather, it's just not worth the uh, risk of the watch flying off your wrist. So we'll uh, pop this in the ultrasonic, clean up the case, and uh, I'll do the same for the crystal before I polish it. Now the movement has been uh, cleaned and it's ready to be uh, put back together. So we'll um, start by setting the movement back into the movement holder and um, we will fit the shock protection jewels to um, see that the balance moves freely after fitting them. Because if you have any issues with um, your balance cock being too tight or too high up, you can uh, easily pick that up when you uh, fit the uh, shock protection jewels. So sometimes you put everything together and you haven't checked that. Um, it can cause you uh, to start diagnosing the wrong issues. So it's nice to see that the balance moves freely. And that's what we're going to do now. So before I fit the uh, shock jewels, I'm going to take the pallet and the two cap jewels for the shock jewels in Epilam and um, give them a coating of that. And I simply just drop it in. What Epilam does is um, give the um, surfaces, um, gives them a um, film that keeps, um, that prevents the oil from um, moving around. So it stays put. So I do the escape wheel, the pallet and the capsules. So you uh, wash it in this jar and then you strain out the fluid. I'm just going to let that dry for a second. There you go, like that, magic. The lid pressed on. You want to make sure it's pressed on all the way around. A classical mistake is that the lid isn't pressed on correctly or if it's popped up a little bit on the side and your movement will run and then gradually just stop because it's um, hitting the lid or the lid is touching the um, movement. So um, yeah we'll put this aside and now do I get the uh, jewels out of the epilum and um, yeah, fit them. 
So this is your um, balance uh, with the, uh, without the shock jewels. What I'm going to do is uh, lift the uh, shock spring out of place and um, put the uh, lower shock jewel in place. Now you can see the uh, lower shock jewel is in place. We're now going to fit the cap jewel on top. And on the cap jewel, we're going to put a little droplet of um, very fine oil. So I use uh, Mobius 9010 oil. And that's the cap jewel in place, fully oiled. And you can see how it's secured in place with the shock jewel, uh, shock springs. Right, now both capsules have been fitted and uh, yeah, I can say they're moving absolutely freely. Different positions, upside down, well, dial side up, dial side down, very happy with that. So uh, we're now going to unscrew the um, balance. Uh, put this to the side until we're ready to put it in again. It looks like a lot of work, but in reality, you're saving yourself a lot of hassle down the road. So, I like to oil the bigger jewels, like so, before fitting the wheels and I like to oil the smaller pivots when the gear train is fitted. So for the um, barrel I pre-oil it. The barrel, uh, I use uh, Mobiv Sint, Sint HP 1300. So, synthetic, I guess that stands for. This movement is quite small, being a ladies' movement. So I'm wondering if I should go and get my uh, op devices because I'm starting to struggle to see what I'm doing, um, which is never a good thing. There we go. On these, it's always um, important to remember to fit the um, this part of the gear train here. Um, but, before, uh, before you put the bridge in, otherwise it can be a bit tricky. I do like working on ETA movements. Um, the 
usually quite straightforward. Um, pretty much the Turner movements, or they uh, made their movements very closely together with the Turner. So that was the same, more or less the same company for a while. And um, most of the um, ETAs have ball bearings as well. This one does not. It has kind of a just a press fit bearing, but um, that's all derivative of the Turner as well. I'm now going to fit the uh, rest of the gear train. Now the um, sweep second wheel, I'm going to pre-oil, so I'm going to put a dab of uh, of 9010 here, over here. This is where it touches inside the movement, or inside, um, so that's the sliding surface here. And I won't be able to access that later on. So again, I'm just being blind. The uh, oiling point is just here, there's a little ridge. I'm just going to move this over to the microscope to make sure I got all the pivots in um, into the jewel holes before I uh, put any screws and tighten them because uh, I do not want to break anything. There we go. At this point, we might as well fit the crown wheel and the um, ratchet wheel. So we have a rather peculiar ratchet spring here, which uh, I believe come in, comes in this way. Uh, excuse me a second because I need to look at my photos to see how this works because it's um, not something you see every day. So a little bit of movie magic as so it was a little bit fiddly to fit. The spring comes in here, goes underneath the uh, crown wheel and um, works as a ratchet spring. So it's being wound, it can only be wound in one direction. You won't let the power go down. So the crown wheel is also the ratchet wheel. So um, what shall we call the ratchet wheel then? Mm. Winding wheel? I don't know. Trap. 
power transfer wheel. Let's just call it a ratchet wheel anyway. So there's a square in this, which uh, should uh, line up with the square in your barrel arbor. Like so. And then we have the ratchet wheel screw. You see that gear train is moving very freely. Next thing I'm going to do is um, oil the upper, turn the movement around and oil the lower jewels and fit the setting mechanism, so the winding and setting mechanism. That's what a clean, oiled jewel hole should look like. So with the winding and setting mechanism, I tend to uh, start with the um, sliding pinion and the winding pinion. Oh and then we move on to the setting lever. So I'm going to put a bit of grease on the um, sliding surface of the um, stem. You want to overdo it, but you don't want to underdo it neither. So really a bit of grease on the uh, winding pinion. Pretty much every contact sliding point, you want a little bit of grease to secure smooth action. So winding and sliding pinion in place, you now fit the stem. And you'll secure the stem with the, uh, with the um, setting lever. For this one, usually you screw them in place, or at least on the older models, more modern watches. They just have a pin like this, which you press to release the stem. So now I need to focus a bit, because this is a slightly smaller watch, a tiny bit more tricky. I am shooting myself in the foot, as this is um, an ETA construction. I need to fit this little operating bridge before I fit the stem actually. There we go. Okay, make sure we hit the sliding surfaces. Thank you. 
Let's do the yolk. Let's put the yolk spring in place. This is the one I um, lost earlier. Don't want to do that again. Actually, going to fit that under the microscope because it's quite small and fiddly. There we go. And we might as well fit the uh, setting beaver spring next. I should have my optimizers on. I'm struggling to see today. Lighting is not the best neither, but uh, we'll get there. I was operating with a camera as well. It makes uh, the, the dynamic a little bit different. So at this point, we can now wind a movement. Um, and I quite like to test a movement. Um, so we'll put the palette and the balance in before we put the rest of the uh, setting and date mechanism in place. And that way, we can exclude uh, something wrong with the base movement. Whereas if we fit everything else, we've got several more things we need to go through. So if we get issues after we fit the, uh, after we fit the setting mechanism, we know that the, most likely the issue will be related to that, if that makes any sense. So your pellet fork is, uh, is essentially your um, way of releasing the power from the uh, mainspring in a regulated way. And the pellet fork is of course regulated by the balance, which has a little imp on spin which hits the uh, bottom of the fork opening it a bit so you have an open space in between here allowing the gear train to move down and as it hits the corner of the bank it will lock it and the balance will move around and the balance comes around hits it again opens it up you have a little bit of free time in the middle where the gear train moves downwards and lock again and backwards and forwards a bit of movie magic there now the um Pallet cock is in place and uh, we can wind the movement. In an automatic, you have a sliding mainspring so you can wind indefinitely. But you usually tend to tell when it's fully wound by there being a bit more resistance. That means it's now sliding on the barrel wall end of the mainspring that is. There we go. A bit more resistance now so that would be fully wound. One more thing to do before I fit the balance is to, to oil the escapement. That means that I'm going to oil the tips of the jewels. That's going to um, smear the oil around on the escape wheel. If you don't do this uh, it will have huge, uh, a huge impact on how well your watch is running. Can you see that? Opening and closing. It's your... It's basically I am... My um, Rodeco tip here, my hand is working as the time key or the time regulator on this watch right now. And if I was... Um, 
a chronometer rated watchmaker, I could keep precise time. Ha ha ha. That's the driest joke of 2023. I've now oiled the um, pallet and escape wheel. I'm going to fit the balance. As you can see here, it's your little impulse pin. That's that little red ruby. And we need that impulse pin to hit the inside of the pallet fork. If not, it's just going to hit on the side and that's where it stops. And the best way of doing that is to come in from the side. And twist. Lovely. Very nice. Remember this was a non-running wash. Um, it's simply been gunked up with uh, old grease and oil, which has turned into kind of a form of cement as the uh, as, uh, certain elements have evaporated and disappeared. Yeah, I was a bit uh, distracted talking there, so I lost my screw. Let's try not to make that happen again. We have a running watch. So I'm quickly going to check that on the time graph to see if things look uh, healthy. And if they do, we'll continue putting it back together. Okay, let's see what it does. Well, it looks like a brand new ETA to me. There's a running joke um, with uh, Christian at watchguy.co.uk. That's uh, a lovely chap who uh, taught me most of the things I know within watchmaking. And um, it's, uh, it's running like an ETA. <laughs> and this movement is running like an ETA. That's um, settling 295 hours, 2 plus 7 seconds a day, 0 0.1 beta error. It's amazing. This this watch wasn't running. That was just dirt. Let's put it up. Um, let's try crown down. This crown down position. Yeah, a bit of variation. Okay, we've gone from plus seven to minus seven, crown down position. That is, uh, okay, minus nine. So we've gone from plus seven to minus nine, um, crown down. That is very impressive. So you gotta think, um, when wearing it, you've got different positions, so that's why you sometimes set your watch a little bit fast. So when you're actually wearing it, it will compensate. This is actually minus seven now settling, perfect. And so I, I would not be surprised if um, this uh, this uh, watch would be very close to uh, cost specification. So I mean chronometer specifications. Of course, it's not chronometer rated, but uh, it's very good. All right, so let's do dial up position. Just let that settle a bit. Amplitude is rising. There we go, 296. And you can see that it's not, uh, not minus five. Let's just let that update. On my wish list is a new time graph, but this one is just very reliable and does its job, so I, I have a hard time justifying spending uh, two grand on the, or more on a Weishi uh, when the Weishi does the same job for a fraction of the price. But hey, it saves my customers um, me putting the prices up for now. So dial up plus zero seconds a day. I would not be surprised if this would pass a cost test today.
plus two seconds a day. Amazing. Really, this is a little lady's movement, and it's, uh, well, it's performing like an ETA, you know. If I had a Rolex lady's movement performing like this, I uh, would also be very happy, and I would say it's performing like an ETA, and this is why. Absolutely amazing. Good, now we know it's performing very well on the gear train alone, we might as well fit the um, setting and winding mechanism and the uh, date. So, watchmaking is kind of the thing where you learn from your own mistakes, because if somebody just tells you, it will fly over your head until you do it yourself a couple of times, and then you'll definitely remember. using the microscope to oil the um, oil this this is actually a cannon pinion which comes because this isn't driven central it's um let's see if i can see here your watch is driven from the pinion here coming from um, this wheel and uh, that drives through this, driving this wheel, and you have your cannon pinion on top of here. So you have your clutch, well, cannon pinion means clutch basically, and um, you have your sliding surface here where this meets. So I put a little bit of grease there. on this one sometimes they have uh, chamfering which makes a huge difference of how smoothly it winds again I'm talking and losing parts so I'm trying to be quiet there we go Notice earlier, out of habit, I pre-pre-oil these um, pre-oil these um, these um, what do you call them? Stakes, <laughs> which you fit the wheels on. The, um, it's important. Keep it all lubricated. clever your little quick set wheel here at this point we're ready to put the uh, calendar disc in place almost let's do that in here as well So we have our little um, tension spring here for the date wheel. If you didn't have that, your date wheel would just be a sloppy wheel that would never hit the right position. So it's important we have this. So I'm terribly sorry, but I'm I'm a little bit blind today actually, so let's do this under a microscope. There we go.
there, gently put that in, try not to scratch anything, so that would be the end of my world for today. There we go. So let's have a look. The middle position is your quick set date. Which works. And we have our time setting. Which works. Um, to change the date around. I'll fit this when I'm fitting the dial. Oh, you know what? We might as well just fit the dial now. Now uh, we can put the auto winder on first, but I'll just show you how the date works. Let's see how a wheel goes on there. There we go. So that again, make sure everything works. By the crown, we're on the sixth. Seventh, excellent. Let's advance that way, test our go into the middle position, test our quick set. Yep, that works. Happy with that? Good. Now let's remove the um, hour wheel again, turn the movement around and fit the auto winder mechanism. For the auto winder, we have our own auto winder bridge. We have these two reverser wheels. We have this intermediate wheel, and we have the larger intermediate wheel. We also have a very uh, oddly shaped screw head, which is the screw for the bridge, I guess, underneath the auto winder bridge. Well, Cock, whatever you want to call it, which is this. So before I put this in, I'm going to treat these reverser wheels in a special solution, levator solution, which um, oils them from the inside. So I also let that. Um, be wrong but I, I do like to blur these out with the compressor after I've dipped them to make sure it's not an overflow of solution like so Works a bit in the same way as Epilam, it's um, but it's actually a greasing agent that's supposed to um, allow the reverser wheels to move freely. And it, uh, I find that it works pretty well. I've had pretty sticky reverser wheels, and this have loosened them up and given them a few more years of life. Especially uh, handy in the case of um, Omega reverser wheels. They're getting uh, 
hard to obtain and very expensive. Here you can see some reduction gearing, allowing the uh, auto winder wheels to uh, eventually wind the, the ratchet wheel. So on the ETA is typical in the higher jeweled versions that you find uh, both jeweling in the reverse wheels and you'll find jeweling on the underside here on the upper side of the uh, auto wonder bridge which uh, of course is pretty good for longevity but uh, this movement seems to have survived very well So tighten this underneath the microscope because I don't want to break any pivots. I'm also going to oil it under the microscope because there are very small um, bushings in this. There we go, our reverser wheels have been oiled up. To be corrected, there are actually jewels in these reverser wheels. Um, a bit hard to see and extremely small, but they're in here. Impressive stuff. Uh, very nice movement indeed. The I don't think I have a jewel count stamped here anywhere, but it's uh, more than 17 jewels, I can guarantee you that. So nicely, the um, nicely nice detail is the uh, blued screws for the auto winder bridge. I wouldn't say the finishing on the screw themselves are particularly good. They're fine. There's nothing impressive, but it still is nice to know which screws go where by the color coding of uh, bothering to having them blued. At this stage, I'm not going to fit the um, oscillating weight yet. I'm going to fit the dial and hands. Here's the dial, with this lovely um, X factor, we could say. these little hooks we're gonna tighten again like so so being a um, being a date watch we now need to also set the time correctly so that you have the date change around 12 o'clock first we need to get to the date change We are close to the date change. There we go, snap. Now we can get the hands. We can use a tiny polyp. 
position them a little bit past, as I know I've already passed it. I'm just going to put this hand on very lightly, like so. Now we know just about when it's going to change today. There we go, we're a little bit over. So, because the hand is super loose, I'm going to manipulate this just a tiny bit. Like so, and we'll try again. I haven't tightened the hand, I've just put it on top loosely. There we go, perfect. So that's pretty much spot on. I'm now going to tighten the hand. I'm going to use my um, hand fitter. Yeah. Now we align minute hand to the hour hand. Such. Make sure our gapping is fine. And some touch. <clears throat> Excuse me. See that we're fairly straight at six o'clock. Looking good. Let's check the date change. Ah, that's a bit early. Let's have a look at that again. Three minutes early, what do you say? Five minutes, that's too much for me, isn't it? Five, three minutes. Ah. This would be satisfying if it hit just at 12. So, okay, let's take the hands off and try and hit it just at 12, yeah? Now we know it just changed. So I'm gonna realign this to just about 12. I don't want to fettle around too much with this because if you keep taking your hands on and off and on and off, you uh, risk deforming them or having an accident with a dial, so it's all, you know, relative. But uh, I do know the date changes on these are quite precise and um, within a couple of minutes at least. Again, six o'clock, looking good. One minute past uh, prior, yes, I will live with that. That's much better, much more satisfying. Not 100%, but you guys can criticize me for that, but I think it's good enough for this watch. Now let's fit the uh, second hand. Again, just make sure that the hands don't touch. Push it down, plenty of space, excellent. 
Lovely, that means we are ready for casing. Let's get the movement back into its case. The crystal has arrived and I've gotten a new one. I did try to pull the shield one, but it just didn't quite get there and I was getting very thin, so I decided to get a new crystal. Yeah, I'm fitting the old crown again, um, but the new owner is um, fully aware that she should keep the watch away from water, so hopefully we won't have any of these um, rust issues again. And the most satisfying part of putting an automatic together is putting the auto winder back in place while the oscillating weight uh, is onto the auto winder. It's working, winding the watch. Wonderful. Now we can put the case back on. Put a new gasket, case back gasket on that as well. Ta-da! Now look at that beauty. And that's what I call a success. So I've got two straps um, for this watch. One is a very dark brown, the other one's a light brown. I think definitely we're going to go with a light brown this case. Um, as it goes for the watch. Pretty cool, this is a composite material strap, so no animal products involved in making this, and it will go very well. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a gold plated buckle, but I'll see maybe I have a TSO one lying around. Anyway, that will go very well with the brown dial and the gold plated case, I think.
So today it is the 12th and the beauty of a quick set is you put it into the right position and we can change the date. And let's um, get it to the time now, 3.43. I would say that is uh, mission accomplished. Lovely watch, and uh, I think Nick's girlfriend will be delighted to wear this. All right, until next time, take care. There you go, here you go, let's see what you think. Five pound watch from a rusty old stand in Bewley. Man, that is crazy. I think it is no, no. What? Oh my God. That's incredible. It is actually a brand new watch. It's wow. pretty cool, isn't it? It's so cool. <laughs> you think yes. Anna will like it? Man, she's gonna love it. Excellent. Mission that accomplished. Mission accomplished. A bit too small for you though. Yeah, it's not going to fit my big old wrists. But look at that little beauty. Isn't it lovely? Man, it's come out way better than I expected, even like. It is. I was positively surprised myself. Mm. The die is in such nice condition. It's so cool. Yeah, amazing. Oh, bloody happy. Good job.